next, the next uh, part is two. Right? The next is the phenomenon. Two uses of narrative research. The second is the use of narrative research as a phenomenon of the sort of human experience. Um, storytelling, this is A, storytelling is an essential characteristic of the human condition, right? Storytelling is an essential characteristic of the human condition. Me personally, outside of all the philosophical stuff that I read and um, that, I, that, I'm, that I'm interested, I'm, I'm very, very interested in, in, the, in the relationship between sort of, and I want to get too heady with this, but um, our understanding and our understanding through um, storytelling and folklore. And I don't think anybody does this better than a social scientist, he's now deceased, um, Joseph Campbell, a hero with a thousand faces. Him and George Lucas, um, Lucas used uh, uh, Joseph Campbell's sort of storytelling um, uh, paradigm to structure, I think this is correct, structure his account of um, Anakin and Vader in the, Star Wars, um, in the Star Wars epic. So it's important to recognize that storytelling is essential. It's an essential aspect of who we are. In telling stories, right, and I think I'm going to get to this in, in a second, in telling stories, um, and in the art of sort of accessing meaning from participants through the use of storytelling, we have to recognize that storytelling unfolds chronologically, right? There was a beginning, there was a middle, and there is an end to the story. Right? There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's pretty, pretty, pretty basic. That beginning, and middle, and end, for some participants and for some situations, would be very, very apparent. Right? I, I can move from chronologically from one event to the other event, and I can connect these events easily. What you have to recognize as a researcher is that this beginning, middle, and end, right? The, the story. Right? And here I am as a researcher. Right? Um, we want access to this story. Right? We want access to this narrative. Why? Because there's some significance that this narrative has, right? This narrative has significance, right? This narrative has huge significance. And what is that significance? Meaning. I need to get access to the story so that the story will take me to the meaning of the story, the significance, right? So I'll give you an example. And there are many, many examples, but I'm going to give you one from, you know, my own personal childhood. Um, in Jamaica, there is uh, a series of, so this might be a good, again, this, as an, another example, this might be an interesting research topic for those, and not necessarily the one I'm about to say, but something like this might be a good research topic using narrative research for your thesis, dissertation, so on. So, uh, in Jamaica, we have the story of Anansi the Spider, right? And Anansi is a spider, and the whole point of the, the tales of Anansi the Spider is to get the young child to understand morality, right? So the meaning for most stories is a moral meaning. But in order to get to the moral meaning, I have to go through the story, right? And the story has, first he did this, then he did this, then this happened. And because of this connection, and the connections between the beginning, middle, and end, we recognize what the moral of the story is, right? Um, just as you would tell a story of, let's say, the three little, three little pigs to your child, and I, I want to keep this very simple so that you understand. I'll complicate it later. But, you know, there was a pig who built a house from straw. Then there was a pig, I don't remember the story. But then there was a pig who built a house from wood. And then there was a pig who built a house from, like, brick. The whole moral of that story in giving various examples is to tell your child that there is an ethic to hard work and to not doing things, uh, not attempting to cut corners. The story is a means, a conduit for accessing meaning. Similarly, in narrative research, the moral, quote-unquote, to the story, the meaning of the story, might not readily be apparent to the participant, him or herself. The participant, as I said before, might not recognize the significance of his or her own life story. It is not for us to tell the participant, here's the meaning of your life, here's the meaning of your story, but what we do is we engage the participant in sharing his or her story with us, and then... Once we've collected that story, we can go back and analyze that story through the view of, you know, many different theoretical frameworks. And that is uh, very, very important. Okay, so 
Um, the first thing that we recognize is that we need to access we need to access this meaning that I was talking about. And I talked about the meaning. The meaning is going to be implicit, right? It's implicit. It's not going to be something explicit. Um, for some stories, it might be explicit, but primarily the meaning, the significance, the whole drive of this is what's driving the research, right? My research is um, my research agenda using narrative research model is to eventually arrive at a sense of meaning where um, what was disclosed to me by participants can be shared with the world and so on and so forth. Okay, um, the next thing that we recognize is that part of the storytelling, um, part of sharing the story with the researcher might be to convey tradition. Part of the story might be to convey tradition. Um, it's very, very important if you are a researcher and if you're interested in some of the traditions that groups of people have or individuals have, in order to understand the traditions that they have, you need to talk to individuals who truly understand how their traditions came about. Um, they will share their story with you and you will gain better insight into the tradition. And there's many, many traditions that you can choose from, right? There's many traditions. Some families celebrate regular traditions in the States. So, for example, um, New Year's Day, Christmas Day, uh, Thanksgiving Day, and on and on and on. Um, but as you all know, America is essentially, um, uh, they say it's a melting pot, but it's a very, very diverse population. And there are many, many people within the United States of America that have traditions that other Americans might not know about, right? And it's, it's accessing um, to have a better understanding of the American tradition as such we really need to engage American, Americans about the various ways and the various traditions um, that they have. And the way that we access this is through telling stories. Um, tradition is very important. So if you're interested in the traditions that families have, um, or the tradition that uh, an individual has had or created, then it's important that you, you access it um, through a narrative research model. Morals is the next, and we talked about that. Obviously, the whole point of telling stories is to convey morals, and I gave you examples of that. And then, um, number four, and again, I don't ex I'm not suggesting that this is in any sense um, exhaustive. There's many, many more um, uses for narrative, narrative research. I'm just giving a few examples. The next is cultural. The next is cultural. Um, and stories are told, phrases are told um, throughout various... Uh, throughout various segments of the population, the global population, that reinforce culture. For example, um, in Jamaica, there, there's, a, there's a saying, things done by half are never done right. right? I remember my mom told me that religiously uh, my, my whole childhood. You know, if I'm cleaning the kitchen or something, um, and I forgot to do one corner of the kitchen, Jason, you know, things done by half are never done right. And I'm like, okay, things done, okay. But then you become a grown person, and you start to think, oh my goodness, yeah, things done by half are, are really never done right. Um, this, this, this encapsulates a lot of these, right? It encapsulates the, the tradition of, of Jamaican culture, right? It, there's a moral ethic behind that, right? Don't slack on your work. It's sort of like the Three Little Pigs story that I was telling you before, right? So this idea of accessing um, a very rich, rich understanding, a rich understanding of something that you might not, um, at, at present, at the beginning of your research, have very much understanding of, it's great to use a narrative research model to be able to access that because in accessing the meaning, the significance of the story that you were told in your interviews, you're going to uncover a lot of this. You're going to uncover tradition. You're going to uncover morals. You're going to uncover culture. You're going to uncover meaning. Right? All of these and many, many more things will be uncovered. It's um, between your, um, your committee members, your, your professors, um, to help shape your research such that your research um, and the questions that you're asking elicit something and responses, data that will give you this very, very rich um, response which you can mine, which you can mine your information from. Okay.